more minute till till we go. Cool. Cook family, are we on the ready? We are. are. Doggos, are we on the ready? I love it. Yes. Luna's always ready. She's perfect. The other two. This one in the front looks kind of dumb. <laughs> no, that's Luna. She's a sweetheart. That was the dumb puppy. The puppy that she was made. She hasn't quite mastered gravity yet, so we're working. All right, guys, as always, this will probably get a little rough around the edges, but uh, let's do this thing. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I am your host at Matameos. Uh, yes, for all my grand fans out there, that is how you say it, and this is where it comes from. That's a unique little fact to start to show up. Uh, welcome back. We definitely missed you guys it's been 14 days it feels like forever ago wait that's not true frankly it feels like freaking yesterday um as always today i'm joined by elaine the last millennial cook and actually her family andrew and ainsley as well but sadly not kevin walt whitman busso whose cat mistook his pinky toe for something edible we are wishing him a speedy recovery and the best is he goes forth in nine-toed and unbalanced life. Today's show features our friends from north of the wall, the wildlings of North America's tundra, of people who live in a country technically larger than the U.S., but with only 10% of its population, a population of which 90% lives within a two-hour drive of the U.S. border and consumes 95% of the world's maple syrup. Maybe some of that isn't actually true, but this is Moxie Live, where the points don't matter and fake news shouldn't result in anyone consuming Clorox. Before we get started, though, as always, a quick break for our statement stuff. Yay! <laughs> I didn't prepare anything for the state of the stuff, so in the words of Bill O'Reilly, F it, we'll do it live. Um, I am behind on getting our last two episodes up on the website, I promise that that will happen before 2021. Outside of that, uh, the Moxie family is live and well. Uh, we hope you guys are all doing well in the current environment. Um, we are going to be starting a new page on our website where you can submit actually sample requests. And uh, the goal is for the designers on the call that we can actually ship samples to your apartment already with return labels in cords and plugs. So making the most of the ability to do what you actually need to do, which is look at touch field product, not just look at a specification sheet. So look for that to come out. Um, outside of that, next week, we are going to be doing a round table talk on Moxie Live with some of my designer friends. I'm looking forward to sharing more about that. And that frankly wraps up. Stay with stuff. Cool. <laughs> Uh, so without further ado, I'd like to introduce this crew and uh, actually my co-host who really is my primary host for today, Elaine, take it away. Hey everyone, um, it's nice to talk to you guys again. We took a break last week, but we're back and ready to go. Um, so today I'm actually in uh, Fort Erie, Ontario, which is, which is across the border from Buffalo, New York um, at Barbican's factory with the CEO and CTO of Barbican, Andrew Cook, um, and Ainsley, who is the CFO. So when you purchase anything from Barbican, she's the one that answers. Um, and we have, of course, the office dogs over here, um, Luna, Lily, and Digger. So if any of your orders have teeth marks in them, they are the reason Digger eats literally everything. Um, he is only six months old, so he doesn't understand the difference between food and light fixtures. We'll teach him that soon enough. Um, so today I wanted to kick off with a slight intro of Andrew. Andrew has been in the lighting industry for 32 years. They founded Barbican in the back of their house um, with uh, two children at the time strapped to them. Um, and somehow we've managed to keep the whole family together for the past 32 years. So that's been a, a huge plus. Um, now we've expanded to two factories um, one here and then one three blocks away, uh, which has over 100,000 square feet of 
uh, production line um, and over 70 staff. So we are able to handle any of your large orders um, because we've done it multiple times before. So today we are going to uh, showcase some of the lighting here and the ceiling system um, and then we'll break into some of the other products later on. So um, Andrew, without further ado, he's going to introduce what's above us. Okay, thanks Elaine. Um, <clears throat> what uh, we have developed here is a ceiling system that is fully illuminated from above um, and also it allows all your sprinkler heads, HVAC, and all the normal uh, accoutrements that normally are you know protruding through the ceiling system are all now allowed to be above the ceiling system. Uh, the key to it uh, was actually a summer project that Elaine started on when she was in uh, university. It's a uh, 3D printed fiberglass. Uh, we currently have three patents on this product now. And um, it basically is a three dimensional fabric, if you want to call it that. Uh, it's extremely light. It uses just the minimum amount of resin to bond it together. Uh, and the panels are four feet by eight feet and are fully suspending um, on their own. So uh, a very rigid product, um, again, using the absolute minimum of materials. Uh, to produce a product that uh, does something that uh, no other product can do of its kind. Um, the reason that it works is A, the material itself has a class A uh, flame, has a class A flame spread rating, uh, very, very low smoke uh, generation on it. And also the spacing of the grid is crucial to passing the NFPA code, and that's what allows the sprinklers to go above it. So uh, there are some restrictions in terms of clearance between the sprinklers and the, uh, and the mesh itself, but it's fairly, uh, it's fairly straightforward um, to, uh, to be able to use it. Uh, you can see here in the room, uh, the illumination is almost perfect and there's virtually no shadows uh, anywhere in the space. Uh, you can see as Elaine's walking by, there's no, uh, she doesn't cast any shadows. Um, and that's because of the, um, a unit complete, almost complete uniformity of the lighting in, uh, in this room. Um, the other thing that uh, is really uh, uh, cool about this is because the way the lighting is arranged above the mesh, uh, there's almost, um, almost well, not a very small amount of interaction between the light and the actual ceiling itself. So what you can do is you can change the color of the mesh and not uh, drastically affect the uh, amount of light or the color of light that is being passed through below it. Uh, so you can see here, I'm standing directly underneath a black, um, a black ceiling, and there's virtually no difference between me standing under here and over here where I'm standing below a blue one. So uh, very, very um, versatile in that, uh, that format. Can be cut to any size um, and uh, like I said, standard sizes are four feet by eight feet. Okay, anything else on the no, that seems on that? Okay. pretty good. Right. Um, we should have this installed in the showroom. It was supposed to go uh, installed in the showroom uh, about a month ago, but of course with the coronavirus, uh, that wasn't able to happen. Um, so we're hoping to get that put into the showroom as soon as possible um, so that you guys can come see it yourself. Um, so fun product that was actually um, that came out of the ceiling system above was the weave collection. Um, so let me just turn this on. Um, so the weave collection is actually woven fiberglass as well. Um, this one is the icicle. So the icicle comes in, it's a one inch diameter tube um, and it comes in anywhere between six inches and um, 60, 60 inches. Yeah. <laughs> really easy for that to, for me to remember that one. Um, and it come in, in any color, same as the ceiling system. Um, we had a really cool installation done in New York um, by Herald Square. It's the Lush there. Um, and they programmed uh, the, the weave to actually dim up and down throughout, throughout the day. So it has kind of like a twinkling light um, uh, view. Uh, there. They also come in fun different. Oh, Helps if I don't unplug the fixture. Fun other different shapes. Um, so here is here is one of them. Um, this is actually uh, a reddish pink color. 
that kind of comes through. And I got the one behind me, which is a longer um, tapered uh, version. This is really light. Um, you can basically play football with it if you really wanted to. Um, it's only about five pounds, yet it's almost as tall as I am. Uh, I guess not, but uh, it's four feet tall. Um, and they come in tinier shapes. This one actually here was a custom one that was been able to, from the request um, that I had uh, from a project that was upstate New York, um, till uh, Barbecue was able to produce this, was two days. Um, so I sent them uh, the shape that I wanted. I wanted a kind of a Maryland shape and they were able to do it, do the, the custom printing, because it's all 3D printed. Um, in, in two days to get me a sample. So that was wonderful. Uh, very easy, very lightweight, and it's pretty, um, it, it passes the Elaine test, as we call it. Um, I've managed to draw basically every fixture that Barbican has made, um, and they all seem to, to work perfectly fine after that. So that is the, the Weave products. Um, oh, we've got a couple of different other samples. This is the Zerna, um, a little baby one. I call them the the fairy lights because I picture it going into an enchanted forest. Um, yeah, so that is the uh, the weave collection and the sealing system. We're going to now move over to uh, some laminated fabric, which Barbie Can is most known for. Um, so I'm going to pass it off to Andrew to introduce you to um, the laminated fabric and uh, the metro. So. Um... The laminated fabric itself, uh, we have always used, uh, well, in the last uh, 12 years, we've always used uh, PETG. Uh, PETG is a, a resin that was designed for disinfecting. So this has uh, become pretty much a staple in most hospital environments uh, because of the fact that it can take just about any of the uh, cleaning uh, chemicals that they use in, uh, in a hospital. So uh, it, uh, unlike acrylics, acrylics tend to uh, react to uh, chlorines and alcohols, so they tend to craze and haze over time. Uh, this product just, uh, you know, can take just about anything uh, that, they're, uh, that they're throwing at it. So um, the material itself, uh, we've developed a method for welding it. So you can see here there's no, uh, well, I don't know if you can see this, but there's virtually uh, no seam. Uh, we get... Uh, pretty much a very shadow free top and bottom uh, with the assembly of this. So you get a perfectly uniform uh, illumination. The other thing that we do is uh, we're very conscious about uh, lamp image. So our fixtures are designed so that you uh, never get any kind of pixelation or uh, major hot spots uh, in the fixture. So, so this one, uh, this one still has its uh, plastic coating cover on it, but it's, uh, it does um, you know, a nice job of uh, illuminating it. Also, most of the products, with the exception of this one, because it's double lens, are usually uh, very high efficiency. Um, typically, most of these are putting out about 100 lumens per watt, and uh, we can also do all of the additional things that need to be put into it. Uh, if you need sensors, uh, for uh, uh, daylight harvesting, or if you need color tuning, these are all things that we can build into this, uh, into these uh, fixtures. Because we build these from the ground up, uh, we have all our own circuit boards designed to be able to either be voltage controlled or uh, current controlled. We're able to do all of that specialty um, uh, LED distributions in the fixtures to make sure that they uh, they look good. Um, this one, uh, we do all our own uh, printing. So this one has a, a print that is then laminated into, into the material. So it's uh, scratch, uh, scratch resistant. It won't come off because it's behind a layer of PUTG. Uh, we do different fabrics, um, just about anything you want to put onto a shade. Uh, we're typically uh, able to do that. Uh, the other thing that we developed with this was the Metro Modular um, system. So this is a series of shapes uh, that will allow you to pretty much make any uh, shape that you would like. Uh, if you go onto the website, I think you have about 12 different shapes. Um, each of them is available starting with a 3-inch by 3-inch cross-section. And then also 
Uh, those go all the way up to about every inch. Typically, uh, you can go all the way up to 12 inches high, 12 inches wide, or three inches high and 12 inches wide. Whatever combination that you'd like to do, uh, we have that uh, capability. So you can actually change the look of the fixtures drastically by playing around with the, uh, the profiles. Um, so here you can see one, this one's called our purpose gap. This is a, makes it very easy for installation uh, and maintenance. We also do a butt seam gap where there's no gap here. Uh, that's available as well. Uh, a little trickier on the installation side, but it's definitely, uh, definitely doable. And that's what this particular one here is. Uh, the, the shades are all assembled and screwed together so you don't get light leak through the edges. And uh, then you uh, then you mount the fixture. Uh, it's fairly uh, fairly quick and easy to do. I'm going to take over here real quick just to show everybody because I propped up the camera. This is a complete configuration of that Metro series using one, two, three, four different luminaire types or fixture types um, to make that complete configuration. And obviously, we have uh, white on the outside and blue on the inside. Janina, who's on the call, this is actually over her desk. Uh, so it just gives you one idea of a shape that you could make out of the different shapes. Yep, it's virtually unlimited. Yeah. So from kind of the success of the Metro um, system, Barbican wanted to expand to another type of Metro system, and they came up with the HPC3. Um, so here I have, oopsie, here I have the HPC3. Um, this is the four inch diameter. Um, this, this guy can be mounted horizontally, vertically as a pendant. Um, it can be attached together. The longest length um, for a straight is 10 feet, um, but it can be curved. The radius, um, the minimum radius is four, uh, 24 inches. Um, there we go, perfect. Uh, the lumen output on these is uh, 1200 lumens per foot, uh, which is Quite a lot even though I can stare directly into it and it doesn't hurt my eyes. Um, then you can also increase for the, the 8 and the 10 inch diameter you can go all the way up to 3200 lumens per, per foot which is a lot so if you need it to be the only um, fixture in the space it can definitely put out the, the light that you need it to. Um, it can be curved so in Matt's photo, if Matt do you want to switch to your there we go. In Matt's photo, he has the curved versions um, all put together in uh, a modular system. Um, and it can be done in a 90 degree angle as well. Um, so you can have a perfect uh, 90 degrees and other custom angles um, are available, but they will be custom work. Um, they come in eight, or sorry, four, six, eight, and 10 inch diameters. Um, and they're really fun to play with. We've used these on a lot of jobs, mainly because they can be linked together. There's a lot of options on how, how you want to lay this out. I do have a fixture here that is the six inch diameter, and it is used as a pendant. So here is the pendant version. There is a, a hole at the bottom, um, but this can be removed. You can do just a, um, a, a seamless bottom on the bottom if you want. That was uh, a request that was done by actually the same uh, project that I was working on in upstate New York um, for the small Zerna fixture. They, they wanted a flat bottom when we were able to produce it pretty quickly. Um, so that is the HPC3. Um, you know, the other thing about the HPC series is that it illuminates 360 degrees around the, around the cylinder. So in a lot of cases, you're able to illuminate a larger area with a single fixture um, without getting that glare that you would typically get off of a slot fixture. So it uh, provides a very soft uh, illumination within the space, um, which is uh, one of the uh, you know, key features in uh, why it's been selected for a number of different uh, uh, installations and offices and actually we're going to be discussing a custom version of this that we have done for uh, the new headquarters of uh, Google so uh, we can uh, we can look at that a little later. Cool okay so uh, I, just, uh, I just want to add to that sorry host jumping in um, it does come in standard singular sections like Elaine was demonstrating with the four quarter and is actually very price competitive against standard direct and direct slot um but a lot easier to look at definitely i can vouch for it 
because I look at this guy all the time. So cool. And right, actually, Matt, if you keep your your um, your screen like that, on both sides of Matt is the HPC3 with their acoustic um, uh, sleeves over top. Um, so that one's the Karen Bola that we'll be kind of visiting later on in the acoustic section. Um, and HPC3 just slides right in. Um, and it's kind of the cornerstone of Barbican's acoustic line. So that is actually it. I'm going to pass it back to you, Matt, um, to go over um, the sponsors for today's episode <laughs> while we go and run to the other side of the factory for the next part. Cool. Sounds good. Thanks, guys. Run. You have 37 seconds. You can do it. Um, as always, guys, we'd like to just say thanks. Take a little break. Um, I'd like to share our sponsor today. Uh, actually, believe it or not, today we are sponsored by Barbican, a tasty soda malt beverage out of India. Bet you didn't know that existed. Uh, you can get yours the next time you're in the showroom. We'd just like to thank them. And as always, uh, <laughs> uh, and that's pretty much it. Those guys are on the run. Uh, I hope everybody, uh, if you have any questions, drop them in the Q&A. Uh, or shoot us an email, et cetera. Thank you for the time. Oh, we have a question, yay. Tell us a joke, oh God. Uh, that's a good one. Uh, actually, you know what? Hey, the rhinoceros, why don't you tell us a joke now that you're on? Nope. I don't know any good jokes. <laughs> hey, rhinoceros, what do you call the fake noodle? Oh, I don't know. What do you call a fake noodle? An imposter. Ah, ha, ha, ha. <laughs> bada bing, bada boom. <laughs> Guys, that was Walt Whitman, Kevin Busso. Uh, I hope you're doing okay, sans toe, bud. Perfect. I think we're. Oh, helping. good, because that wasn't awkward. <laughs> Uh, as you can tell, we switched rooms and are slightly out of breath, but that's fine. A good sprint in the afternoon really wakes you up. Um, so right now we're going to take a pause on the product overviews and ask some um, personal questions about Andrew and his experience in lighting. Um, so the first question is, what has been your worst experience in lighting? Are you sure you want to hear this? Yeah. We, I, I heard this. I, just, I, I had a question come in. I, have to, I just have to let the audience know that oh. yes. Kevin's toe is completely gone. <laughs> so, super important. <laughs> um, but, answer. Um, so, this was back 2005. We did lighting for uh, mausoleums and uh, columbariums. Uh, we were producing products for those uh, facilities as well that were not lighting related. Um, I had to go and repair a couple of um, LED boards uh, that were being used uh, in the columbarium section and as I was working there um, these little flies kept coming in and landing all over me and um, I you know got my work done and left and work, was leaving with the contractor and uh, I said like there's so many flies in here like what's, what, what's going on with this and uh, the contractor goes, oh, those are cadaver flies. And they only live in columbariums and mausoleums uh, because they live on dead bodies. So I uh, went to the washroom and cleaned up. And then, <laughs> then we went to lunch. It was pretty horrible. <laughs> so that's, that's my worst lighting experience. There you go. It's not that story is not better the second time. I thought I was gonna <laughs> stop gagging, but no, no, still the well, main. Don't you worry, you'll have yours soon enough. <laughs> yeah, yes. Mine only really involved me getting electrocuted, but that's okay. <laughs> I, I think I would prefer the electrocution. Yeah, that, 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 that kind of goes. That kind of oh, goes. You saying that now? Yeah. Next time you're in the office, we'll we'll test that theory for you. <laughs> okay. Um, so the next question is, what has been your best experience in lighting? Um, a best experience isn't a particular part of lighting. Um, I would say that uh, for me, the best part of the lighting is um, selling products and having people specify products where they, um, you know, where they understand what we've put into the product. Uh, they really get it and use it in a very creative way. 
Um, you can't see it, but there's lots of pictures in the space where uh, you know we've been uh, we've had our products used in some pretty amazing, uh, pretty amazing ways. And so uh, you know that's always a kick for me is uh, you know whenever something that you've worked on and uh, you know people pick up on it and use it, that's uh, that's always a lot of fun. So that will be my Favorite. Perfect. Uh, lighting. Yes. Cool. Um, yeah. And we're actually going to dive into one of those projects right now. So I've asked uh, Andrew to kind of go through one of the projects that he's worked on that from the beginning of when Matt gives him the call and says, hey, we have this crazy project that we need to do. Uh, we think Barbican's product can work. Um, can we talk through it? Um, so right now we're going to go kind of through the modifications of the HPC3 that we had to make on uh, a product going out to one of Google's facilities. Um, so, Right, so I mean, the, that one started off with, we didn't even know what it was for. Um, we didn't know how big the project was. Uh, they needed a surface mounted um, fixture that uh, was um, small, as small as possible able to deliver 1,600 lumens per foot and uh, had to be perfectly surface mounted. And then as we found out, um, the longest continuous length uh, was uh, 120 feet. So these are massively long fixtures. They change directions. So, not, so as part of our HPC, we have our fixtures so that they can uh, change directions um, you know, along a horizontal plane, but these had to go up and down and follow the line of the staircases as they round, wound around the building. So this fixture actually transitions from the ground floor all the way up to the third floor and basically wraps all the way around the inside of the atrium in one continuous line. Um, so it's, uh, it's pretty amazing. It's uh, 500 feet long and uh, it um, goes through a series of joints uh, which have to be held within about a half a degree uh, to maintain the, the, the level of the profile. So a simple sketch, you know, started off with, can you do a four inch diameter? Um, we were not sure, but we were able to get a mock-up done in cooperation with our, uh, our supplier of the tubing. We got a mock-up done very quickly, um, built it for the lighting design firm, and um, then we were able to do some of these other things that they needed. So one was they wanted to have a very minimal joint. Um, because we were mounting to the ceiling, it gave us a little more versatility in terms of how we were going to mount it. Um, but uh, we were able to get that to work. Uh, one of the other questions that was brought up was, uh, you know, what do we do about expansion and contraction over 120 feet? So we designed special clips to be able to hold the um, hold the, uh, the joints together. So we have that done. Those were all done in a clear PTG material. They snap in on the top side of the tube so you don't notice them. And uh, it helps, uh, helps to hold the uh, joints together. The other part was how do we make these um, horizontal transitions going from the horizontal to the vertical. Um, those we were able to do by um, welding the PTG so we had to take our tubing and we have to actually use the same PTG material. And it's much like the way that you do um, stick welding. Uh, we have to put a small amount of the resin in, uh, in, in a uh, strip form and then actually weld that uh, like you would weld a piece of steel. We were actually weld the plastic together. So we got a minimum joint. We were able to make all those transitions. So uh, the product is actually shipping right now, and uh, we hope to have it installed in the next two months. So uh, we're really looking forward to that one. Very complex job, all kinds of different things that got thrown at us all the way through the job. And uh, you know, we were able to adapt because of our ability here to manufacture on demand because we have all the equipment here. So, yeah. Yes, that's one thing that I wanted to highlight. Uh, Barbara Kian basically makes everything in-house. The only things that we don't make are the drivers and the LEDs. Those come from uh, China, obviously. Uh, and so everything else is made in-house. So you have the freedom to, to make small adjustments to the fixture without creating this, this mon monster, uh, monster price uh, with that fixture. So that's the, one of the really good things about Barber Can. Um, so now we are going to quickly transition over to 
uh, Barbie Can's walls. Lighting designers don't tune out quite yet. There is a new product um, coming out at the end um, that we finally got the okay to release. Um, so we'll be talking about that soon. Uh, for the walls, um, you can see I'm going to give Andrew a little break because he's been talking so much. Um, behind me is the S400, uh, or sorry, S200 series. Gosh, there's only two and I, can, I can't even remember them. Uh, this is the S200 series. It's the glass walls, as you can tell. Um, they come in different thicknesses, uh, half an inch and three eighths, if I'm not mistaken. Yes. Um, they have sliding glass doors and uh, swing doors. Um, and then if we move over to this side, this is the S400. It is their laminate panel um, wall system. Uh, we just got a new uh, edger uh, as a new equipment a couple of months ago, so now we can make all of the, the panels in-house. Um, this allows us to do custom shapes uh, and fun things like that. We do all of the colors, um, obviously, because Barbie Ant loves to have tons of options for you, so uh, we can make sure that it perfectly fits uh, your design. Um, and this is where the acoustics come in. So these, this is a custom acoustic uh, uh, print. Um, as you can kind of tell, I just wanna make sure that you guys can see it um, with the special adhesive on the back. So this is a removable adhesive. Um, this is the, it can stick to the walls and it's not moving anywhere. Uh, it can stick to the glass. Again, it's not moving anywhere. Um, but you can peel it off if you want to change faces, change change colors, things like that. It has a lot of versatility in it. Um, so that's basically my spiel. Oh, oh no, forgot one thing. Sorry. Um, these acoustics uh, panels can also be done in um, a brick. So this is the brick wall. Um, this is the dark red brick wall, and it, doesn't it look like I'm standing behind a brick wall? Um, it's all acoustics. It adheres, again, to, to any walls, even, even walls in New York City. Um, we were able to put a, put a complete wall in. I think Matt's going to show it to you soon. I can see he's running over to Genie's office right now. Um, these can stick to basically anything. If you've been in our showroom, you know how kind of lopsided the walls are. Uh, and Andrew was able to install this in two hours and I was by himself. Matt and I gave him no help whatsoever. We went out for dinner instead um, and he was able to do that solo. So super easy to install um, and if you don't want brick you can have custom artwork done. So this is artwork done on the, the felt so not only do you get a cool piece of art but you get also acoustic um, acoustics with it. Sorry, my brain kind of stopped there. Um, this is done by, I believe, Sarah Phelps. We partner with two artists, one in Brooklyn and one in Toronto, Canada. Um, and we partner with them so that we can put their art um, on light fixtures and on uh, walls. And that's one of the things I'd like to emphasize. Um, what Elaine's been showing so far is the acoustics for the walls, but of course, all of that can match onto the lighting fixtures. Uh, so you've got, again, the ability to work with the interior designer, both on the lighting side, to uh, provide something that they could be working on with the walls and the other uh, coverings that they're using in the space. You can also do them in different shapes as well. So if you want to just, this one doesn't have the adhesive on it. If you wanted to do just circles or triangles, uh, rectangles, other shapes, I'm kind of blanking on other shapes right now, um, you can do that as well. So. That is our spiel about walls and wall acoustics. We're now going to let Andrew introduce you, or sorry, Matt, are you in front of the- Oh, yeah, I can show it real quick. Cool. Boom. So that is a faux, faux wall, uh, or brick wall behind it. It's with, out of the gray, uh, gray uh, brick, and uh, you can barely tell it's there. Um, when I walk you past know, it, I, know you, I know you missed the space. I'm sorry. Also, you have one sad balloon here hanging off your thing. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, uh, very cool application of the felt and super, super cost effective um, way to do coverings. Um, so yeah, back to you guys. Cool. Yay. Um, so now I'm going to pass it over to Andrew to go over the new 
uh, wall system that will also have the lighting designers beside it. So, Andrew, okay. take it away. So, um, the S400 series uh, is uh, a four inch deep wall. Uh, what we did was we tried to see if we could turn that into almost like a window. Um, and so uh, we have, I think we have some renderings. Do you have those on the, can you show those, Matt? Matt is running back to his desk. Oh, he's running back to his desk. So uh, we've got this set so that you can actually emulate sunlight as though it would have been striking a window. Um, it's, uh, we can go, you know, from a four, or sorry, a three foot by a nine foot panel, we can go all the way up to 8,000, uh, or sorry, 20,000 lumens that, you know, on across a typical wall is almost 20,000 lumens of input. So if you want it to look like sun streaming in through a window, you can do that. Also, you can then, you know, dim it down to uh, whatever level you would like. So um, this is the, uh, this is the full wall. It can also be done as a, uh, what we call a clear story. So it would just be a small section, say one or two feet uh, at the top of the wall uh, to make that look. And it also all fits within that, uh, that wall cavity. So we are able to deliver the wall as a complete unit and fully illuminated. Uh, you can also do color tuning um, as well uh, if you're trying to uh, emulate um, you know, what the uh, sun is doing outside. Uh, all of that color tuning can be incorporated in this, uh, into this fixture as well. So um, pretty cool. Uh, we're pretty excited about it. We think uh, it will actually allow you to do all the lighting in the space just from the walls uh, like a normal window. Um, so uh, we're uh, really keen to get that installed in, uh, in here. And, and also, as soon as we have it here, it'll be installed in the office in the park. Okay. Awesome. Cool. Perfect. So now we are going to pass it back to Matt uh, for Movie Club while we run again to the other side of the factory to show you the last part. I swear we're almost done. Um, part of Moxie Live. Hashtag barbecue. Okay. Thanks, guys. Run away. Yes. Uh, thank you, everybody who stuck with us so far. Um, I am going to be doing Movie Club on my own today. Boom, 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 boom. And, uh, you know, in quarantine, I feel like you really have a chance to reflect on movies you haven't seen in a long time. And given that today's show is with our brother North of the Wall, I thought the good one for Movie Club would be ba -ba -ba, Canadian Bacon. For those of you who have not seen Canadian Bacon, uh, I have a little blurb here for you about the, uh, about the movie. Um, the U.S. economy is in a rut, and so is the president's approval rating. What we need is a good war, but the Russians aren't interested. Hey, how about that polite big country to the north? Niagara Falls Sheriff Bud B. Boomer takes it all a bit too seriously, though. Uh, William F. Powers of uh, the Washington Post says Canadian bacon. Uh, there are bad Washington movies. Uh, and then there are bad Washington movies. But in the history of films about presidents and their policies, few have even approached the pure awfulness of Canadian bacon. It's a new comedy from Michael Moore, the frolicsome director who won fame with his 1989 comic documentary, Roger and Me, and more recently imposed on the Republic, the egregious television show, TV Nation. Now he returns to the multiplexes with the first feature film, fictional story that's supposed to make us laugh. It doesn't. Pat, Peter Streak of the Chronicle Staff Critic says, Bacon okay, is sure, sure. good comedy. Uh, but frankly, I think it's fantastic. I think John Candy's hysterical. I think the Dan Aykroyd cameo, cameo is totally worth it. Uh, and who doesn't look at, like a good movie that makes fun of Canada? And back to you. Cool. Uh, killed it. Hi. <laughs> uh, so we're back. Um, we are now in Barbican's R&D facility. Um, so this is where all of the fun new products come from. Uh, I am standing beside a giant cigar. Uh, that's what we call this fixture. It is also a woven um, fixture. It's our life size, one of our life size products. It is six feet tall or seven feet tall. Really? Okay. I guess I'm not 5'11". Um, so this one is really light. Even I can kind of lift it up and I'm super weak. So that shows something. And 
Again, it would be fully illuminated all throughout the inside, just as the rest of the weave collection. Um, so I'm going to move this. Yes, that product was uh, designed to go around the HPC fixtures. So that's what goes on the inside of that. I was just going to say real quick, Elaine, if that's six feet tall, you're having what we call a short day. <laughs> often. Sometimes people have tall days. Yeah. Often, if you're like me, you have short days. So it's okay. Welcome to the club. I'm finally short. <laughs> so this one, this is also one of my favorites. This is the Karen Bola Mini. Um, so this guy is six feet tall. It has the HPC3 in the center of it with the acoustic baffles on the sides. Um, this kind of showcases that we can go um, pretty damn tall um, with all of our, our uh, acoustic fixtures. So they're not just the small ones. We can do, do large ones if the, the space allows it in your projects. Again, remember, oops. I attached the light and that was stupid. Oh, and you called that the mini? Yeah, it's the mini. Okay. <laughs> it's kind of just a word on puns. I mean, it's obviously not the mini one. Um, we like to joke, you know. Um, this one is also felt, so I'm, this is a felt uh, halo sleeve and you can see it has artwork printed all around um, the sides of it and you can barely tell where the seam is, which is awesome. Um, and this just slips over any fixture um, that you want. So you could have this artwork put on this giant carambola um, if you wanted it to. So I'm gonna put this back and Change the camera? Yeah, I'm going to tilt the camera so that you guys can see the product a little bit better. Cool. Okay, so Andrew, do you want to take it away? Sure. All right, so this is our 24-inch uh, Carambola uh, Direct. Uh, this one's based around a 6-inch. That one over there is around a 10-inch um, HPC, so you can see that... Uh, the, um, you know, we've got, again, complete versatility. This one goes all the way down to 12 inches in size, uh, where it's based around a two-inch uh, two inch fixture. So this is one of the, uh, this is one of our drum shades. Uh, this has a, a curved felt. Our felt is uh, nine millimeters thick, um, fully bent. There's a number of companies that are doing it out of three millimeter felt, but we get a full nine millimeter felt on here. Uh, it was something that we had to develop to be able to get it to uh, to work. You can have it set so that it's this uh, this high, uh, the way I've got it set now, where it's about flush with the bottom. You can have this overhang below the fixture, and you can also, which is a very cool effect, um, have it have it show, yeah, uh, bring a little bit of the shade down below it if you wanted to use a colored shade. Uh, and still have some acoustics in there as well. See that has the shade below. It's also in orange as well, so it's um, it can be changed as well. There's markers on the the inside that all you have to do is take them off and adjust the the tabs, um, and then the fixture will stay at that. So super easy, very much can um, play around with this once you're on site of the project um, and can be fine tuned later on. Love me a good push pop. Yeah. All right, I mean really the whole, um, the whole thing with this is have fun with it. If you want to create your own size, your own fixture, um, this material as long as we can cut it out in two dimensions, very easy to, uh, to work with. So, you know, please feel free to submit your own designs. We're happy to uh, build anything you want uh, to your, uh, to your uh, specs. Uh, here's another one that we've developed. This is actually a, a mini, uh, mini model. Um, this was originally designed actually to be a freestanding uh, fixture that would go around a desk to provide an acoustic uh, an acoustic barrier but still allow 
uh, ventilation and uh, also a certain amount of viewing into the space. So, um, you know, we, we play around with a lot of different things here. Um, so, uh, you know, we're always experimenting with new things. Are you, are you telling me that that would have been like eight feet tall by eight feet yeah. wide? Well, this was designed to be eight feet cut out of eight foot panels. Yeah. yeah. Cool. But now it's hat size, so you can have the option of wearing it as a hat too. Yeah. There if you, you really wanted to. Yeah. It's a, uh, I mean, we, and we can easily make light fixtures out of it. Obviously this one isn't designed to allow a lot of light out, but, um, you know, again, the, the, the concept behind this was going from a pentagram or penta, you know, a pentagram shape all the way to a circle. So that's why it transitions and you get that unusual shape. Um, you can have some, uh, you know, we just have a lot of fun with the, uh, with the design, uh, playing around with different, uh, different things. So, uh, we do this, we do grids, um, that can be, um, you know, pulled in, into any shape that you want. So you can just put a, a, a grid suspension over an area that you're working on where you need some acoustical response and just change the whole profile of the ceiling. So instead of, you know, a flat ceiling, you've got a wavy ceiling. It's all really easy to do. We have the, uh, the software here and the people who know how to use it to, to make it work. Yeah. Cool. Okay. And the last one that I wanted to showcase was this large black one. So there are actually tiles that you can peel off. Um, so all of this, all of the acoustic um, options ship flat, um, which decreases the shipping costs for you, which is awesome. Um, and then they can be built on site and they are all just, just push um, uh, friction held together. Um, and so the fixture would sit inside. Uh, let me bring you closer. So that you guys can, can see. They really, they really are easy to put together because I put the two together actually on my desk without uh, any instructions and managed to do it. Right, and you're not, you're not stuck with rectilinear shapes either. Uh, this is a curved one. Uh, we have this one uh, should be rendered. Um, I'm hoping it will be up on the website in the next week. Uh, so it's like an orange weight a shape, but what we've done is staggered these so that you get an interplay of light between the panels as it goes around the uh, around the sphere. Yeah. So uh, a lot of fun. Just like I said, send us what you, what you'd like us to play with if you don't see what uh, what we have on our website. Cool. And then I'm gonna showcase a little bit of of the R and D facility. So we have Dad. Do you mind picking up your computer? Yep. Um, we wait, have, wait, wait, everybody's got to sign an NDA real quick. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> we'll do it virtually. Um, we have uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, um, uh, what we have, we have turned uh, 3D printer, or CNC machines into 3D printers. Um, so we have a large um, capacity that we can work on all of your things. Uh, if we turn behind us, Barbie Can's new paint system or paint mine just got in. Um, so we can do any custom um, paint color that you want pretty darn easily. Or I'm going to step over some spare parts. Um, and then, as I said before, there is over 100,000 square feet of your manufacturing. Um, production uh, that or production floor. Um, I'm going to bring in here and shut the lights off because all of our employees are at home. Um, but it shows all of the machine uh, capabilities that we can do. As I said before, everything is made in-house. That's one of our CNC's. We have five, five um, full capacity CNC's like this one. Um, but over here is more of our machine area. Again, everything that we do is made in-house. Nothing uh, will go get past our quality assurance team um, if it isn't at the, uh, the level of quality that Barbie can uh, expect from all of its um, products. So that is it. Andrew, oops, I'm going to try and switch my there we go. Selfie mode. Uh, that's it from Barbican. I really hope um, that you guys uh, enjoy our little tour and that uh, I'm going to pass back to Matt. Thanks, Elaine.
Uh, seriously, thanks everybody for stopping by. Uh, as always, if you have any questions, shoot us an email afterwards. This presentation episode of Moxie Live, uh, how the bacon is made, will be up on the website before the end of 2020, that I can promise you. Uh, but yeah, uh, thanks again. Have a great weekend. And hopefully we will see you all next week uh, when we're going to have a few lighting designers on the show to talk about some of their favorite projects, some of the weirdest things they've encountered, some of the toughest things they've encountered, uh, and some of the funniest things they've encountered in their tenure in the lighting profession. Ciao.